Hello viewers, good day. Today's topic is about the rationality in economics. Who is rational in economics? There are several definitions and there are several different ways people understand rationality in different kinds of fields. Rationality in ethics means something different, like rationality in our lives means something different. But when economists call a rational individual, by that rational individual they mean the person who maximizes his or her utility as an individual consumer and he or she maximizes his profit as a producer, and he or she maximizes the welfare of the individuals if he is the government or he is running some kind of welfare organization. The word that economists use the most frequently is the word rationality, especially the classical economics. The classical economics assumes an economic agent to be rational. This is the behaviors that we study in economics that may be rational or irrational. Rationality assumes that individuals will make made decisions that provide them with the highest amount of personal utility. These decisions provide people with the greatest benefit or satisfaction given the choices available. In some of the cases, the rationality is measurable. Like say for example, a cricket team wants to score the highest runs. A team that prefers low runs on higher runs will not be called rational whereas the team which prefers higher runs or higher number of runs on lower number of runs will be rational. Similarly, a firm does everything to maximize its profit. Any firm that prefers more profit on less profit is rational, or any firm that prefers less profit on more profit is irrational in economics. So welfare-oriented organizations like NGOs and government want to maximize welfare of the organizations. If they prefer more welfare on the less welfare, they are rational. But if they prefer less welfare or more welfare, that they are not rational. And rationality can also be sometimes unmeasurable. Like say, for example, uh, in case of utility function, a consumer tries to maximize an unobservable subjective utility function. These utility functions were called ordinal because all the matter was the ordering between the utilities of the different consumption bundles. Similarly, there is another concept related to rationality, which is more real, but like it is in the, in, the, in the literature, it has got little room and it has got little ability to explain the economic behaviors in different kinds of models. This particular topic relates to the bounded rationality. The bounded rationality theory is based on the abilities of the human in taking decisions. It assumes that the rationality that people display in their actions is bounded to their ability to processing the amount of information they have. The concept bounded rationality provides us a realistic view about the decision-making process of humans. However, with such concept of rationality, it is difficult to describe human actions in even simple models relative to the human behavior. To understand the rationality concept, look at this example. Like say, for example, there is a there are two kinds of firms that are leading or they are basically selling the beverages in the market. Now, if we assume that there are two firms, the Pepsi and Coke, and if the Pepsi increases its price, because like they are the products which they, yeah, they sell are the substitute to each other. If the, if the Pepsi increases its price and the Coke does not increase its price, that basically the Pepsi loses. Similarly, if the Pepsi decreases price and the Coke also follows the decrease in the price of the Pepsi, they both lose because they end up on the price fall. Like see, for example, if the Coke, Coke decreases its price, which actually is followed by the Pepsi. Pepsi also decreases price and the Coke further decreases price and the Pepsi also follows again and they decrease price. At the end of the day, they will be actually having a price war and in that price war, the main loser will be the firms. Now, if you look at this payoff matrix, the matrix which actually explains you like, say for example, if the both firms go for high profits, if the both of the firms go for high profit, they will have a kind of a situation, like say for example, they will be earning $5 billion. But if say for example, the one company lows, keeps the prices low and the other company keeps the prices high, the company that keeps the prices high actually gets $0.1 billion. And the country that actually lowers the prices actually get $23 billion. Similarly, the company, like, you know, the other in the other ways, in the other kind of example, if the other company basically is like, say, for example, that actually lowers the price, but the, the other company keeps the prices high. The company that keeps its prices high will actually be having just a profit of $0.1 billion, whereas the firm that will be actually increasing the, or de the price, like decreasing the price, will be making $23 billion.
product. But if they both lower the price, they will be having $1 billion. Now, being a rational individual or the being a rational decision maker at a Coke or Pepsi, what would you prefer? Would you go for high price? What if, if you just increase the price, but the other people keep the prices low, you will be losing, like, you know, you will be just making $0.1 billion, whereas the other firm that actually increase, decreases the prices or keep the prices the same, they will be getting $23 billion. But what about the low prices? Like, say, for example, if you just keep your prices low, and also, like, the other firm, basically, even if they go for the low prices, like, you just actually make $1 billion, which is better than $0.1 billion. So in that particular case, the rationality actually is going for the low price. Like this low price is a kind of a Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is defined as the best kind of a strategy given the strategy of the others. So the rationality here is go uh, for the low prices. So this is a rational choice. The rational choice is just keep your prices low. So this is what basically, you know, like is, is the kind of rationality in economics. Now, the question arises that are we rational decision maker? Being rational decision makers, we should take decisions such that maximize our self-interest. But the question is, do we always take such decisions that are rational? It's very like, you know, a con con like questionable. We are limited in our ability to control our attention and process information. Our judgment is often distorted by our emotional reactions. Like, say, for example, look at this advertisement. Now, this is the advertisement by economist.com. Now, this economist.com actually advertises that they're like their uh, subscriptions. Now, the first option that you have is the economics.com subscription. One year subscription to economist.com includes online to access all articles from the economist since 1997. That if you just get this access, just online access, to the articles since 1997, you will be have to pay around $59. But if you go for the print subscription, you will go, you will have to pay around $125 per year. And that will give get you the print subscription. Like you will be getting the printed copy of the, the Economist. Another option that you get on the same advertisement is the printed web subscription. This is what basically, you know, like it's $125 again. So that $125 in the third option provides you the subscription to the print edition of The Economist and online access to all articles from The Economist since 1997. You being a choice maker, like, you know, which choice you will go for. The first offer, the internet subscription for $59 seemed reasonable. The second option, the 125 print subscription seemed a bit expensive, but still reasonable. But the third offer, a print and internet subscription for $125, who would want to buy the print option alone? Obviously, no one. So why print option? This was only to manipulate our behaviors. Humans rarely choose things in absolute terms. Rather, we focus on relative advantage of one thing over another the, and estimate value accordingly. For instance, we don't know how much a six-cylinder car is worth, but we can assume that it is more expensive than the four-cylinder car. Okay. So this is in the next lecture. Thank you for joining us. In the next lecture, we shall be talking about some other issues related to the economic behavior of the individuals. Thank you very much for joining us.